Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Starbound Heavily Modded Edition. Uh, if you want to know what mods I'm going to be playing with in this series, check the description. I have a link to my collection uh, on Steam. It's all Steam mods, so you don't have to, if you have it on Steam, you don't have to worry about going to the Starbound website and importing mods or anything. You just click subscribe. It's super easy. Anyways, let's continue. Media of Fracking Universe, although we're not going to be getting too into it until sort of later in the series, just because there's a lot to it, and I want to sort of go through the base game first. Uh, oh, let's delete this. He was sort of a test character. Yep. Create character. Uh, as you can see, we have a ton of different races. Uh, we're actually running out of space down here. I wonder what, what uh, happens when that happens. Uh, anyways, we're going to be playing as the Elonites, because they're pretty cool. Uh, you can pause and read those... Uh, advantages and disadvantages if you want. Alright, so I'm going to take a second to just customize this and then I'll explain everything as we go. Alright, so we have Bite, our Elonite. Kind of rhymes, unintentional. Uh, basically, they're they're obviously heavily based on Tron. Their primary weapons are Chakrams, and this mod adds a bunch of them, or a bunch of like lower level ones you can craft easily to the game, and they're actually pretty powerful, all things considered. Uh, so we're probably going to be using them. We're going to be playing on survival mode. Uh, and I think... I think that's good. Let's get into it. And we are going to be skipping the intro. Just because it's pretty boring, so... Let's get into it. Alright, we have... Arrived on our ship. I'm just currently traveling through space, even though it's kind of broken down. I like the sort of custom Space Invaders icon on the, uh... On the storage locker there. Alright, let's talk to our sail. Oh, and it immediately powered up our ship. Okay. <laughs> we are currently in orbit around an unknown world. The ship is heavily damaged, and we are unable to leave orbit. I suggest that you beam down to the planet's surface using the teleporter and search for supplies and perhaps a means of fixing the ship. Alright, I can do that. And opening our locker, we see we have a handful of food, an identity disc, which is actually our primary weapon. Again, very resemblant of Tron. Let's see, let's put that on slot one. Do we have any bandages? No, oh, because they'd be in that first tab if we did. Uh, let's get rid of that. I just sort of keep my uh, my hotbar in a particular fashion. Like, I always have my weapons on one, my bandages on two, and my building blocks on three. But we don't have building blocks or bandages yet. So, we're just going to have to deal for now. And my torches are always on six. <laughs> All right, ooh. What is this, right next to us? Oh, this is, um... Avakin, I think, right? Polymer and panels used to hide and protect electronics. An amalgamation of thread, crystals, and feathers to create intricate patterns. That is actually a chest down there, though, so we are gonna break through it. And get it. What does it actually say? We're gonna have to scan all this stuff later, but... A sturdy armored equipment case. And it holds an Avali data chit. This chick grants user access to restricted information. It could be useful in upgrading your equipment. Huh. I actually don't know what that does. <laughs> oh, that's actually a uh, prop piece. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Those are actually blocks. Alright, I'll take all of it. <laughs> Alright, well, the first thing I like to do, usually do uh, upon starting a, a new game is sort of circle around the planet and gather all of the crops that I can so I don't have to worry about starving to death. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then I'll cut back if anything interesting happens. Huh. This is new. These little... I don't remember what these enemies are called, but they're red, and they seem to have a lot more health than, uh... than normal enemies, and I think they're regening, because that red... the red, like, health stuff coming out of them. It's really weird. They're kind of cool, I guess. I don't know if that's something new or not with Fracken Universe. At least I assume it's Fracking Universe. Huh, a peach tree. That's cool. I have not played this game in depth in a while, so there's maybe new stuff uh, added to these mods that I'm not super familiar with. Although I'm familiar with most of them. Huh, it says that these peaches are extremely well preserved, so it might actually be worth it to uh, start up a farm of or a, a tree farm with peaches, because if these foods last for a long time, then that's that's pretty good, and we can get wood out of the deal as well. So we just need to make like one large tree farm, basically. That'd be swell. Hmm. 
Yeah, fun fact, if you're ever fighting those spitter enemies, just just crouch, and they'll just shoot over you every time. They can't hit you. <laughs> I mean, assuming that they're on more or less an even level from you. If they're beneath or above you by a drastic amount, I don't know if uh, crouching will still work, but I do know that crouching, when they're on roughly the same level as you, uh, works pretty well. Alright, and here is the portal that we needed to find. However, cannot go through it just yet. My scans are picking up an unknown radio signal all around this archaic energy source. I will patch it through to you now. If you've picked up this message, you must have found an ancient gateway. Please, use it to come and find me. You can power up the gate with core fragments. Ooh, it's actually getting dark out, too. I have scanned for nearby core fragments. They appear naturally within the geology of this planet's... Uh, of this planet. Readings suggest numerous ore clusters deep below the ground, near the planet's center. Alright, so we actually need 20 if we interact with this. Required fragments, 0 out of 20. Uh, there's two ways to do that. Uh, one is much easier than the other. Well, not necessarily easier, but much quicker than the other. And that's to find a structure that always spawns on the starter planet, at least in my experience. Kill an enemy inside of it, which will drop the uh, 20 core fragments and then power the portal that way, rather than digging down to the center of the planet, and then mining it, and then coming back up. Alright, here's a weapons chest. That has an upgrade module. That's cool. Uh, if we didn't have yet an any disc, that spear would probably be really nice to us, because it's actually 10 DPS, which is decent for this point in the game. But the range on this is just too good. We can actually dual wield them. And they're pretty cheap to make. They take... Uh, what is it, like 5 coal? Yeah. <laughs> and our race gets a bonus damage for every identity disc we wield, so we can actually get up to plus 25% damage, which is really nice. Double disc power! <laughs> can even hit these guys. More of these little regening enemies, that's really weird. I haven't actually seen any normal variants of that enemy, I wonder if... Oh, speak of the... Oh, no, that is a regen one. Never mind. It just looked kind of yellow in the, uh, the darkness. I wonder if that means if there's, like, a roll on a, an, on a planet. If uh, if an enemy is going to be, like, an elite or not, or whatever you want to call it. And if that's the case, then all enemies of that type are then the, the upgraded versions. Because I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. Ah, yes. Two treasure chests. If you ever come across these sort of graveyard areas, uh, always just press alt and it'll illuminate uh, interactable objects around you and you can see that there are chests underground. It's kind of cheaty, but that's not a mod or anything that is part of the base game, so I'm going to say that it's acceptable to use. And you can also increase that effect by holding down control and looking around you and holding alt, so you can e see an even wider area as you look around. Let's see what's in this chest number one. Uh, just some Molotovs. Kind of useless, but you know, it's free items. We can sell it if if nothing else. And there's another one underneath this tombstone. So what is... Oh, 185 pixels. Not too shabby. Oh no, there's a few of the normal of these enemy types. That's really weird. I wonder what the, uh, the mechanics are behind those sort of elite-style enemies spawning is. Alright, just over this hill there's actually a little bandit encampment. Let's see... Oh, let me grab this rice real quick. <laughs> Didn't notice it, don't want to forget it. Nice, so that guy has an axe. Little glitch. Oh, there's actually three of them. Oh, jeez. We just have to... Fortunately, they can't, like, re-aim once they've started firing, so we just have to take advantage of that and just, like, jump before they start firing or something. Ow. Actually, they're not doing too much damage, so we should be okay. Get out of here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and use their tent to heal up. Oh, and there's some iron right there, too. We can grab that. If there's ever two trees just growing right next to each other like this, I like to take them because... If you aim right in the middle, you can actually chop them both down at the same time. And since you always mine at the same speed, no matter how many different blocks you're mining at once, you actually basically get two trees for the, the same effort as mining one tree. And since trees take a long time to chop down, uh, I like to get value wherever I can. Like, I'm not going to waste my time on all these individual ones. 
But if I come across sort of two that are right next to each other like that, I certainly will. Alright, here is the structure I was talking about that's always starts on or is always spawns on starter planets. There's a camper here, I'm just gonna break his stuff and steal all his bandages and whatnot, because that's some good stuff in there. Let's see, where's his bandages? There we are. Put those on too. And call it good. Get out of here. <laughs> Alright, what do you have to say? Now hold on. I'm detecting a variety of life signs in this mine. If you are intending to search it for core fragments, I may advise adequately arming yourself first. I will be just fine with our uh, chakrams, our identity discs. If you're not su sufficiently confident in your personal combat capabilities, an alternative solution would be to dig closer to the planet center to find the core fragments. Core fragments are good for chemical reactions, so miners back in the day would use them to make bombs. Oh great, and we're going to be carrying around some shards of that on us. Isn't that comforting? <laughs> Another little rock snail dealio. Get out of here. These weapons are kind of hard to use, because while they go straight, they bounce off walls and stuff. So it, it makes it kind of hard, unless you throw them directly at the enemy, if they're at an angle. Especially with, like, bats and stuff. <laughs> let's see, let's throw down a torch. Oops. Let's test that kneeling... Or, no, if they're directly beneath us, it's not going to matter. Alright, let's just keep throwing our shockrams down here. Doing as much damage as possible. Yeah, boy. Put on another torch. I like to break pretty much any crate I come across just because uh, it's free loot. And here's the Mama Pop Top, the creature I was talking about that we killed to get the core fragments from. With these shockrams, it's super easy as well. Although with the Fracken Universe uh, mod, she does have a ranged attack, but it's not very threatening. So we'll just kill her. Little spawn down here. Oh, what the heck? That one like beamed out. Never seen that before. Let's see if we can bait Mama popped up over here. We're gonna make a little bridge first. So we can get back up if we need to. Yeah, she has that like sound wave attack, but it really does not do very much damage at all. <laughs> so she's not gonna be too difficult to kill. If we had melee only, this would be a bit harder. But we can kinda kite her around. There we go. And she drops the 20 core fragments that we need. So let's go ahead and uh, gather up all these crates and whatever loot may be inside of them. And then head back to the uh, the portal. Ooh, what is this? A little avian temple of some kind? Alright. See, oh, there's a bunch of interactable items down there, but... Is any of it valuable? These guys aren't hostile to me, which is good. What are these? Lavish bird-shaped jar. Maybe I can smash it. Are they gonna get mad? He doesn't seem to care. <laughs> Alright, nothing much in it. Ooh, there's a lava pit down there. And this poor guy, standing all the way at the other end of the lava pit. He has a quest for us. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do quests. Uh, they're not that interesting. It's usually just, hey, go find my friend, or take me to my friend, or bring me six coal or something like that. Uh, there is a point to doing them later, but we're not going to worry about it right now. Uh, this is just light switches. <laughs> That's really weird. Wooden torches on stands that are powered by electricity. You can see it's turning them on and off. Oh, and we can drain the lava too. Okay. So that's how you get to that guy. Oops. Will this refill it with lava? Or did it just stop the drain? I think it just stops the draining. Alright. Well, it appears that there's nothing really here, unfortunately. So, oh, actually there's something up top there. A sarcophagus of some sort. Looks like that we can probably loot. So we'll do that real quick and then... Continue on. Oh no, that's a bed. <laughs> Never mind, I thought it was a sarcophagus we could loot. Oh, I hear gunfire up ahead. Now, is it friendly NPCs firing at enemies, or is it enemy NPCs firing at enemies? I guess we'll see in just a minute. Or, oh, oh, those are bandits. Okay. Or a bandit, I guess. Oh no, there's, there's a couple of them, alright. <laughs> Grab these items as we go. Get out of here. Oh god, there's three of them? I guess it's about the same as the last camp we encountered. 
Alright, that's two down. This guy's like, no health. There you go, buddy. Are they protecting anything? Any chests? Nope, doesn't appear so. I do have a bed here, though. <laughs> Alright, and we have circled the planet and returned to this gate, which now has a little blue arrow pointing to it, signifying that we have met the requirements to activate it. Card fragments, we actually have 21 of the 20 needed, which is totally fine. <laughs> you appear to have successfully activated the gate, and it seems another message is coming through. You gonna tell us what it is, Sale? There it is. Please, come. I urgently require help. The universe depends on it. Use this ancient gateway and meet me in the Ark Ruins, just past the outpost. Alright, sounds important enough. I guess we can go. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> All right, we have landed at the outpost. Well, there's nothing for us to do right now, except head to the right. Oh, hello there, little doggo. Bork, 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 bork. No? Okay. <laughs> so you can, do you sell the items we need? No, okay. That comes later, I guess. Once we've uh, unlocked the rest of the uh, shops in this place. Uh, this guy has a quest for us up, oh, has a quest for us right here, uh, but we do not have the required materials for him, so we'll we'll get back to it later. Don't worry, you'll you'll see him eventually. Ooh, who's that shady figure up there? I assume that's just the the merchant of this shop. At least until we unlock it, and then he'll come down. More ancient ruins, a teleporter, and this is the uh, the Ark teleporter. So I'll go ahead and grab it and save it. So we can teleport back to there from our ship. We don't actually need to go through that big old portal every time. <laughs> with this uh, color scheme, my character actually kind of fits in with the... Uh, I mean, we're black and white, but the, uh, the blue lighting makes us turn blue. That's pretty cool.
just to give some sort of context to our actions in this game, a little story if you will. The story is not super interesting or anything, but it is something to sort of drive the game forward. Uh, you can like go through the game and get all the best armor and gear and equipment and stuff without doing any story except for the very sort of beginning couple parts. Uh, basically just once you do the mission to get your ship so that it can jump to different systems, you no longer have to do the story if you don't want to. However, we will be doing it eventually. Well, thank you for joining me, dear. With your help, I can. I know we can triumph. Alright, let's go ahead and pop open this baggie before we continue. <laughs> you have a flamethrower. Okay, that seems like kind of a ridiculous weapon to get out of one of those bags. Usually they're pretty garbage. Alright, first things first, though, dear. You need a ship in good working order. Who knows how far you'll have to travel before we're done. I think you should return to the outpost and speak to Penguin Pete, the shipyard captain. Alright. We actually passed by him on our way here. Here he is. Mr. Penguin Pete himself. I can repair that ship, but it's going to take 20 Urkeus crystals. You better get yourself over to the Urkeus mining facility. I've sent the locations on to your ship's sail. Alright, well let's head back to our ship. So if we go ahead and talk to Sail here, and go to Missions, Arceus Mining Facility is what we have to do. However, we'll do that in the next episode. I'm going to end it here for today, guys. Uh, let me know if you have enjoyed this episode of Starbound. It's a game I really love playing. It's super fun, and I, you know, I just always like going through it, and trying out new things, building sweet bases and so on. Uh, but with all that being said, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.